repairing a twin cylinder Stuart 5A steam engine part 4. This is a pair of Stuart 5A steam engines coupled together as one unit and they made a knocking noise when running. In this video I am refitting the valve gear and re-timing the engine. To save some time I reassembled the valve gear without the camera running because when I'm filming things it takes a lot longer. Both of the eccentric straps are only fastened at one end but that's sufficiently rigid to operate the valve gear. The highest points of the eccentric sheaves are set to 90 degrees to the crank pin. This earlier image shows the slide valve in the steam chest and I'm confident that the slide valve is in the right position on the valve spindle. It needs to be able to uncover the inlet ports precisely the same amount at both ends of its travel and then by adjusting the position of the eccentric sheaves on the crankshaft you can advance or retard the admission and exhaust. With a bit of luck when I admit the compressed air into the steam chest the engine should rotate. And just in case you've lost the plot, because it's very easy to lose the plot in these videos, neither of these individual 5A steam engines ran. This twin 5A engine would only run when both of the engines were connected together. They weren't exactly running in harmony and that's what I'm looking for. Two entirely separate 5A steam engines that both run perfectly. I'm hoping now that when I open the compressed air valve to let some air into the steam chest, this engine will run. And indeed the engine does run, and even better, it runs in both directions. The knock is still there though, but that's coming from the big end. I'm going to tackle that in the next episode. In this episode, I'm going to do my usual obsessive tweaking of the valve timing. I've removed the flywheel key with my big screwdriver, now I can take off the flywheel, and I'm actually dismantling the eccentrics, because both of these are worn. And oddly enough, one of them is more worn than the other one. And also, as well as the eccentric straps being worn, there is quite a lot of play on the big end brass on this engine only. I rubbed all of the eccentric straps quite vigorously on a piece of emery cloth to remove some metal from the mating surfaces of the eccentric straps. You have to make sure that the surfaces are kept perfectly square at all times, hence the surface plate and a bit of experience. And by repeatedly fitting the part onto the eccentric sheave, finally you get rid of all of the wear. At some stage I will make a video showing how to do this properly. I got it right in one because I've done a lot of this, but if for instance you take too much off, then you have a bit of a problem, because what happens is your eccentric straps become a clamp and then you can't rotate the crankshaft. This is not a good idea. There's another option, you could remove much more metal than you need to, then rebolt the two halves of the eccentric straps back together, put them in a four-jaw chuck, and machine the centres accurately. Personally, I would only do that if the wear was absolutely stupidly excessive, and in this case it's not, they're just a bit slack. The engine's starting to run quite well now. I think it's time to tighten the grub screw. There are two grub screws in these eccentric sheaves, one at each side. I've removed one of them because I don't want to. And besides, the one at the other side is too close to the keyway. Originally it went down into the keyway, but that's when the valve timing was incorrectly set. Now the valve timing's set perfectly. The engine is running a lot better in both directions. There's less knocking in one direction than the other. Let's have a bit of slow motion. I think that is quite close, but nevertheless I'm going to have a final tweak to make sure everything is how I want it to be. Warning, this process can seriously damage your health. I always try and take what life throws at me, 
and the fact that my brain appears to be wired slightly differently to a lot of other people that I know doesn't bother me at all. I couldn't do what I do if it was normal. In this clip I'm removing one grub screw from each of the eccentric sheaves. One grub screw of this size will be more than sufficient to hold the eccentric sheave onto the crankshaft. In this clip you can clearly see that there's a bit of a gap between the eccentric strap and the eccentric sheave. By looking at this gap I can see how much material I need to remove from each side of the eccentric straps where they meet each other. Everything seems to be fine now, both of the eccentric straps contact the eccentric sheaves, I can tighten the nuts up and they don't bind. They nearly do, but not quite. I was actually quite shocked by the tightness of every nut and bolt on this engine. The nuts and bolts through gunmetal parts do not need to be very tight. If you over tighten them, then they distort the gunmetal parts. It's time once again to temporarily fit the flywheel key and give it another run. In the clip you've just seen it was running on very low air pressure. And I'm quite happy with the valve timing I think. So I'm going to remove the flywheel and go on to the next part of the operation. Before I do that though I'm looking at the feasibility of fitting lock nuts on top of the nuts on the bolts that hold the eccentric straps in place. I need to make some though, these are full size nuts and don't look right. There were lock nuts on top of these to start with. But not only were they rusty, they were individually made and the holes weren't in the centre. So I'll just turn down some commercial nuts. And now for the next part of the job that I'm really not looking forward to. I'm going to attempt to stop the knocking, which means that I have to remove the big end brass. The job starts by disconnecting both of the eccentric straps from the expansion link. Before doing this next part of the job, which is difficult, I definitely need something to keep my strength up. Here's a picture of me about to consume a large portion of Sunday dinner that I made on Sunday. I would say things like, oh, it's the camera angle that makes it look so big, but no, it was that size. I must admit, I really do like food. Although, unfortunately, it does affect my ballet classes. That's enough of that. Now for the job that I'm not looking forward to. This is quite an inaccessible place, and there's not much room to swing the spanner. And I can't really get underneath this big end brass very well, because that would mean removing the engine from the mounting, and I don't want to do that. And one more thing. Just for a change, the nuts on the big end bolts are incredibly tight. So I'm going to leave this job where it is for the moment while I figure out the best way to do it. I might even have a second helping of Sunday dinner. Wherever you may be in the world, stay safe. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.